Hi you guys, it's Lisa. So today I'm going to make a chicken and vegetable soup. So it's been getting pretty cold outside lately and I was looking around on the internet trying to find a good keto soup recipe that I wanted to make. Well I came across I Breathe I'm Hungry which is a very popular website and found quite a few recipes. Well this chicken and vegetable soup recipe that I found is actually called Turbo Atkins Diet Soup, Low Carbon Paleo. And they have a whole uh, meal plan for five days called the Five Day Keto Soup Diet Plan and, and shopping lists and the whole thing. I'll link everything down in the description below so that you can see what I'm looking at. But um, it says it's a soup diet but actually it just looks like a keto menu plan so if you want to take a look at it and see what she has um, I think it would be well worth your while. Um, some of the meals that she has here is um, for breakfast, this is day one, 1200 calories, 83 grams of fat, 17 net carbs, and 84 grams of protein. So for day one, for breakfast is two eggs, tablespoon of butter, two pieces of bacon, half an avocado, and an unsweetened bulletproof coffee. And then for lunch, two cups of this keto diet soup. She has a snack here. I mean, there's a lot of food going on on this diet plan, a lot more than I eat in a day. Um, two large romaine leaves and a half a cup of egg salad. And then for dinner, two more cups of this keto diet soup. So I guess if you're eating four cups of soup, it's just basically um, chicken and vegetables so it's not that many calories and not very many carbs if you really think about it so she's just adding in a regular breakfast and um, and an uh, egg salad or something like that day two is pretty much the same with the eggs and the butter and the bacon lunch is two cups of the diet soup um, snack is um, tuna salad with celery and then two cups of diet soup for dinner. And then for day three, I might as well just read this to you because I'm looking at it right now. Day three is the eggs with bacon, avocado, bulletproof coffee, and the macros are pretty much the same on every single one of these. Um, two cups of the keto diet soup. Snack is egg salad with romaine, and dinner is two cups of diet soup. So it pretty much just keep, keeps repeating itself. Day four is eggs, butter, bacon, avocado, bulletproof coffee. Lunch is two cups of soup. Snack is um, celery with tuna salad. And dinner is two cups of soup. I don't know. I'm thinking by day four or day five of eating two cups of soup twice a day. I get kind of tired of the soup. Don't, wouldn't you think so? And then day five is the same thing. Eggs, butter, bacon, avocado, bulletproof coffee for breakfast. Lunch is two cups of soup. Snack is egg salad. So she's alternating egg salad and tuna salad. I think I would have thrown a chicken salad in there somewhere. And then two cups of keto diet soup. So anyway, that's the five day keto soup diet plan. Check it out if you're interested. But basically I just want to make the soup because I felt like having some soup. And I thought it was a very, very interesting um, combination of uh, vegetables. So anyway, let's get started on this um, soup recipe. And I'm kind of changing it up and making it my own way. So I'll let you know how I'm doing that. So let's get started. Okay, so let's get this recipe started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I have eight slices of bacon here. And I'm just going to chop this up and I'm going to put it in my soup pot. I have a large soup pot right here. Now, her recipe says to use four slices of bacon and a tablespoon of olive oil. But I don't like to cook with olive oil. I like to use it in um, cold dishes because the heat, if you give to olive oil too much heat, 
that it breaks down the olive oil and it's not as nutritious as it could have been. So I reserve olive oil for um, salads and cold things like that. So I'm just going to use the extra fat from the bacon. This is a very, very fatty batch of bacon here, so I'm going to get plenty of fat. So there we go, eight slices of bacon. Throw that in my soup pot. I'm going to put this on the stove and I'm going to let the bacon cook a little bit while I, we chop up the other ingredients. All right, we'll keep an eye on that. So I have an onion. This is a pretty big onion. So I'm just going to use a quarter of it for right now. Because I know onions have a lot of carbs, even though I love them. And at first, I was eliminating onions completely. But, boy, I just miss them so much. So I'm just thinking in moderation, you know, a little bit of onion never hurt anyone. All right, there we go. A little bit of onion for flavor. And her recipe actually says a quarter of a cup. I'm just going to throw in a quarter of an onion. It's probably a little bit more than a quarter of a cup. So when you look at my recipe and you look at her recipe, don't look at her recipe and look at the macros and think it's the same as what I made because everything's going to be just a little bit different. I'm loosely following this recipe. That's just the way I roll. I don't usually follow recipes exactly. I have always like to put my own spin on it and make it the way that I like it. All right, so there's my onion. Now I've got these whole mushrooms. I could have bought sliced mushrooms already sliced up, but I don't want slices of mushrooms in my salad. Not my salad, my soup. I want big pieces of mushrooms in my soup. So this was kind of a little one. I'm just going to quarter them up like that. And on her recipe, it says to use a cup of sliced white mushrooms. And mushrooms have very little carbs and they add a really nice flavor. So let's see how far I get before I decide that it's maybe too many mushrooms. I don't know. Can you have too many mushrooms? Is there such a thing? I've got an eight ounce package here. Should I just chop up this whole package and throw them in? I think I will. All right, I'm going to check on that bacon real quick. I don't hear it sizzling or anything. But I just want to warm it up and let the bacon cook down a little bit. And you know, you're not supposed to put mushrooms under water, running water because they will soak up every bit of that water. Just give them a, brush them off a little bit if you feel like you need to. It's the best way. But these look like they've been cleaned pretty well. Do you guys like mushrooms? If you don't like mushrooms, you can leave them out. But boy, a mushroom on a steak, a sauteed mushroom, oh my goodness, that's one of my favorite things. 
All right, so there's our onions and our mushrooms. I'm gonna let the bacon cook just a little bit more and then we'll be right back. Okay, so now that the bacon has released some of its oil and is starting to cook, let's add our onions and our mushrooms. This is gonna make a pretty big pot of soup. So I'm going to use some for my meal prep this week and I'm going to freeze some for another day. Okay, so let's let that cook down a little bit and we'll add some more ingredients. Okay, so the onions are getting soft and the mushrooms are cooking down. The bacon is doing nice. So now... I'm going to add about a quarter of a cup of these sun-dried tomatoes. They're julienne cut. And I'm th I know you're wondering about the macros on this. So for one and a half teaspoons, it's 35 calories, two and a half grams of fat, three carbs, and less than one gram of protein. And the ingredients on this are pretty clean. So I'm adding a quarter of a cup, which is three tablespoons, but this is going to make like 20 cups of soup. So you're not getting a ton of carbs from these tomatoes, and it's really going to add a lot of flavor. So that's what they look like. Let's add the tomatoes in. I also have a tablespoon of garlic. Stir that in. Yeah, these sun-dried tomatoes are going to add a ton of flavor to this. All right, so let's let that simmer for just a minute. Let it finish cooking up. And we'll get started on the next step. Okay, so while those things are still cooking, I want to talk about this a little bit. I don't know if you've ever tried this before, but this is a jicama. And it is a root vegetable. The... Um, recipe that I'm following says to use two cups of celery root peeled and chopped into one half inch cubes or you can use cauliflower well I don't think cauliflower is very good in soup in my opinion because it gets too mushy and I don't like mushy vegetables or you could use jicama or you could use radishes or turnips so I'm a big fan of jicama I've eaten it quite a bit in my life and so this is what I chose to use so anyway, here's the jicama. It's a very, very hard vegetable. And this is how you peel it. You need a really sharp knife to get this peeling off. And I'm not going to peel it all the way around. Just this top portion because I'm not using this giant vegetable in my soup. And so I don't want it to dry out too much by taking all of the peeling off. So we're going to take most of this off. All right. I guess I should have cut it in half this way first because this is going to be the easiest way to do it. Oh man, that's tough. Okay, I'm going to sharpen my knife and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back with my sharp knife and I ended up peeling it the whole way. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to chop off little pieces at a time, little slices. See how much easier that is? I was doing it wrong. All right, so anyway, the recipe says about two cups of cubed celery root. I'm using jicama. And let me tell you about the carbs of jicama. So one cup of celery root has, root has 11, net, 11 grams of net carbs. And one cup of jicama has five grams of net carbs. And it's going to kind of look like a potato. I think that's why she adds that. But this celery root is harder to find than jicama is. And it actually has less than half the carbs. So let's get this cubed up. I didn't even use half of that jicama that I had almost half. If you've ever tried raw jicama, it almost has the taste, not really the taste, but the mouthfeel of an apple. I've cut jicama up into slices and just snacked on it as a vegetable in like a vegetable plate. This is really good if you're making a vegetable platter. All right. So there you go. There's my jicama. Let's put that in the in the pot with the, the other vegetables. All right. Next step is some chicken thighs. And her recipe says to use chicken breast but I would much rather use thighs. I think they're tastier. They're a little bit fattier. And I just like them. So for this recipe, I'm going to pull the skin off. Of the thigh. And chicken thighs, I'm going to leave a little bit of this fat on here. Um, Chicken thighs just have one bone right down the center there. So if you cut right along this bone, it's actually very, very simple to debone a chicken thigh, just like that. All right, there you go. So I'm going to work on my other chicken thighs. I'm going to cut them up and put them in the pot, and I'll be right back. Okay, so that's what we have going on with the jicama. So now, there's my chicken. I took all the skin off, and I deboned it. I chopped it up, and I measured it, and I have one pound and 11 ounces so just under two pounds of chicken thighs to go in here now in her recipe she had already cooked up chicken and you could certainly use a rotisserie chicken or just any chicken that you've already cooked up ahead of time but I prefer to let all the chicken juice and everything get into the pot and mend in with the soup and I just think it's a better flavor than if you pre-cook your your meats for your soup so anyway there it is and to the pot I'm gonna add about eight cups of chicken broth Oh, 
And this is going to go on a high heat. There's one. So two cartons of chicken broth. Now her recipe says to add water, but I don't know why you would want to um, add water to it. I would like the flavor of the chicken broth more than diluting it down a little bit. All right. There we go. Now this is going to sit, I'm going to put a cover on it. We're going to let it cook for about, well, till it comes to a boil and till the jicama is tender and the chicken is cooked through. Okay, so we have three more vegetables that are going into our vegetable soup. So this right here is red chard. And I already washed it. It's going to trim off the end. Chop this up. We're going to put everything to the side. And when our chicken is done cooking and the jicama is soft, then we'll add these other vegetables. Because these vegetables don't take very long to cook. All right, this is going to add a really nice flavor. All right, so that's just about a bunch of uh, red chard. So let's put that in our bowl. And then I just have a bag of these Green Giant green beans. And these are pretty big green beans. So let's chop those up. Actually, let's give them a little rinse first. It says they're washed in and trim, but I want to rinse those off a little bit first. All right, I'm back. That looks much, much better. So I'm just going to cut these into bite-sized pieces. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's going into soup. Man overboard, there's a snack for Gigi. That's good enough. It's just a rough chop. Let's throw those into the bowl. Okay, and then last but not least, I washed up these yellow squash. So I'm just going to take the ends off. Cut them down the middle. Kind of thick, not too thin. About like that. You can cut them even smaller if you wanted to, but 
this is how I'm doing mine into little half moon shapes So that was about two medium-sized yellow squash. And I don't know if I said before, but that was an eight-ounce package of green beans that I chopped up. All right, so there we go. There's our vegetables. So as soon as the chicken is done and the jicama is cooked, we'll be right back. All right, so there we go. The chicken's cooked, and the jicama is tender. So now we're going to add our vegetables that we chopped up. Everybody into the pool. I'm going to let that cook for another 15 minutes or so until the other vegetables are tender. And I think I'm going to add another carton of chicken broth. Because I didn't add the water that she said to add. And there's a lot of vegetables in there. All right, there we go. Now it's soupy. Give that another stir. And now I'm going to season it a little bit. So I'm going to add a little bit of pepper. or a lot, however much you like. I'm going to add about two about two good pinches of salt. And I'm going to eyeball about two tablespoons of red wine vinegar. There we go. So I'm going to put the cover on. I'm going to let it come back to a simmer. And as soon as these vegetables are tender, our soup will be done. All right, so there you go. Lunch, dinner is served. Doesn't that look good? It smells delicious. And this jicama right here kind of looks like a potato. So if you're missing potatoes in some of your dishes, try out the jicama. Let me know what you think. All right, so there you go. I hope you enjoyed that recipe. And try it out sometime and let me know what you think in the comments below. So one thing that I failed to mention earlier today is this is one of my episodes of Keto Approved or Not. And this month we're doing Fall Favorites. And one of my fall favorites is soup. So anyway, I hope you enjoy that and I hope you try it. And I'll put the other collaborators for Keto Approved or Not in the description below. Follow them, click on their videos, and find out what they have going on as well. All right, so that's all that I have for you today. So until next time, keep calm and keto on.